Hi, welcome to R&S Academy. My name is Ram Prasad. Let me give a small brief about me. I did my master's in r and and then I worked for 25 years with various organizations involving in product development and technology innovation functions. I had five patents filed on my name. Out of my passion, I transitioned into teaching. Presently, I am into coaching GATE and IES aspirants on r and subject. I also conduct workshop on r and systems, faculty development programs, etc. for the engineering colleges. Recently, I conducted webinars for the members of ISHRE and ASHRE. Based on the response I received for the lectures on refrigeration systems, I am presenting here with a series of lectures on psychrometry, again for the benefit of the students and the professionals. I believe these lectures will also add a great value to all of you. This is the fourth lecture in the series of lectures on psychrometry. In this lecture, I will discuss the first part of applied psychrometry. Let me start with adiabatic mixing of air streams. Let two streams of air at state point 1 and 2 respectively are mixing adiabatically. Let MA1 and MA2 be the masses of dry air in the stream number 1 and stream number 2 respectively. Let us now plot these two states on the psychrometric chart. W1H1 and W2H2 are the properties corresponding to the state points 1 and 2. The resulting mixture is attaining the state point 3 and let MA3 be the mass of dry air in the mixture. The state point 3 will be lying on the line joining the state points 1 and 2 on the psychrometric chart. W3, T3 and H3 are the properties corresponding to the state point 3. An important note point here. On the psychrometric chart, the position of the mixture state is such that it divides the straight line joining the states 1 and 2 in the inverse ratio of their masses. Let us now look at the mass balance and energy balance of this mixture of air streams. Let me start with mass balance. For dry air, MA3 is equal to MA1 plus MA2. In other words, the sum of masses of dry air in streams 1 and 2 is equal to the mass of dry air in the mixture. Similarly, for water vapor, we have MV3 is equal to MV1 plus MV2. But from the definition, we have W is equal to MV by MA. Hence, MV is equal to W into MA. By substituting this for each state point, we will get this. And from this, we will have W3 expressed as W1 into MA1 plus W2 into MA2 whole divided by MA3. Now, let us look at the energy balance. We have this expression from the Gibbs law. The H is a capital letter and hence it is absolute enthalpy. And this can be expressed in the form of specific enthalpies like this. And from this, the H3 can be expressed as H1 MA1 plus H2 MA2 whole divided by MA3. These two are important and frequently used expressions related to mixing of air streams in psychrometry. Let us now discuss about the psychrometric heat loads and we will start with the sensible heat load. It is the heat to be supplied to or removed from the moisture whenever the dBT of the moisture is increased or decreased at constant W. The crux of the matter here is that the dBT of the moisture must be increased or decreased during this process. But it should happen at constant W. Hence, on the psychrometric chart, this process will happen along the horizontal line. 
Let A and B be the state points on this line and these are the properties corresponding to them. If the state of the moisture is moving from A to B, then we must supply the sensible heat to the moisture. And if the state of the moisture is moving from B to A, then we must remove the sensible heat from the moisture. But the magnitude of these two heat interactions is equal and it is called sensible heat load. The following are the expressions that are used for computing the sensible heat load. The first one, Qs is equal to Ma into Hb minus Ha. And Qs is also equal to Ma into Cp into Tb minus Ta. We have for Ma an expression like this, Cmm into rho divided by 60. And it has a unit of kg of dry air per second. Where Rho is the density of the moisture and it can be taken as 1.2 kg of dry air per meter cube in psychrometry. And a CMM is the volume flow rate of air in meter cube per minute. By substituting the value of rho in MA, we have MA is equal to 0 0.02 CMM and it is expressed in kg of dry air per second. Let us first substitute MA value in QS expression. Therefore, QS is equal to 0 0.02 CMM into delta H. And we also have the value for CP is equal to 1.0216 kilojoules per kg dry air degree centigrade. Hence, the QS, the fourth expression is 0 0.0204 multiplied by CMM multiplied by delta T. All these four expressions gives us the sensible heat load in kilowatts. Let us now discuss about the latent heat load. It is the heat to be supplied to or removed from the moisture whenever the W of the moisture is increased or decreased at constant dBT. The crux of the matter here is that the W of the moisture must be increased or decreased during this process. But it should happen at constant dBT. Hence, this, on the psychrometric chart, this process will happen along the vertical line. Let B and C be the state points on this line and these are the properties corresponding to them. If the state of the moisture is moving from B to C, then we must supply the latent heat to the moisture. And if the state of the moisture is moving from C to B, then we must remove the latent heat from the moisture. But the magnitude of these two heat interactions is equal and it is called latent heat load. Following are the expressions used for computing the latent heat load. QL is equal to Ma into Hc minus Hb, also equal to Ma into 2500 Wc minus Wb. By substituting the value of MA here, QL is equal to 0 0.02 CMM delta H and QL is equal to 50 CMM into delta W. All these four expressions gives us the value of latent heat load in kilowatts. So far, we had seen that the heat interactions happened either by keeping W constant or by keeping dBT constant. In other words, the process happened either along the horizontal line or along the vertical line. But we have another possibility where both the dBT and W of the moisture will change. And let us look at that now. Let A and C be the state points and these are the properties corresponding to those two state points. Whenever the state of the moisture changes from A to C or C to A, both dBT and W will change. A process that causes the change in both dBT and W would result in change of both sensible heat QS and latent heat QL. The sum of QS and QL in this process is the total heat Q to be supplied to or removed from the moisture. Therefore, total heat Q is equal to QS plus QL. 
in other words q is the total heat load on the air conditioning system following are the expressions used for computing the total heat load the first one q is equal to ma into hc minus ha by substituting the value of ma we will have q is equal to 0.02 cmm into delta h and these two expressions gives us the total heat load value in kilowatts let us now look at two more heat loads that are involved in ac system design infiltration load and ventilation load infiltration is the name given to the leakage of air into the conditioned space through door openings cracks around the windows and doors etc infiltration is treated as a natural ventilation infiltrated air increases both sensible heat load as well as a latent heat load on the ac system the next supply of outside fresh air into the conditioned space is referred to as ventilation ventilation of conditioned space is necessary to supply oxygen and to dilute carbon dioxide odors and other air contaminants for maintaining the purity of the room air if there are more occupants in the room as in auditoriums etc the carbon dioxide content increases and hence fresh air supply is necessary the ventilation air also increases both the sensible heat load as well as the latent heat load on the air conditioning system the next important parameter in ac system design is bypass factor it is the fraction of air stream that left the cooling or heating surface without contacting it 1 minus bypass factor is known as the contact factor or coil efficiency let us look at the bypass factor for sensible heating process let a be the state of the air entering into a heater coil and if s is the heater surface and then and if all the air passing through passing through the heater coil is coming in contact with the heater surface then the state of the air that is exiting the heater coil would be at s yes. practically some of the air will be bypassing the coil and hence state of the air at the co heater coil exit will be between a and s yes. let b be the state of the air at coil exit therefore the bypass factor for sensible heating process can be expressed as ts minus tb divided by ts minus ta and the contact factor can be expressed as tb minus ta divided by ts minus ta let us now look at the bypass factor for the sensible cooling process let a be the state of the air entering into a cooling coil and s be the cooler surface if all the air passing through the cooling coil is coming in contact with the cooler surface then the state of the air leaving the cooling coil would be at s but practically some of the air will always be bypassing the coil therefore the state of the air exiting the coil will be between a and s yes. let b be the state of the air at coil exit with this the bypass factor for sensible cooling process can be expressed as tb minus ts divided by ta minus ts and the contact factor 1 minus x can be expressed as ta minus tb divided by ta minus ts let us now look at the bypass factor for cooling and dehumidification process let s be the cooling coil surface and a be the state of the air at which it is entering into the cooling coil ta w and h a or the properties corresponding to state point a 
if all the air at state point A is coming in contact with the cooler surface, then the state of the air at the coil exit would be at S. Ts, Ws and Hs would be the corresponding properties for that A at coil exit. However, practically it is not possible to happen. Some of the air will always bypass the coil. Therefore, the state of the air at the coil exit will be between states A and S. Let B be the state of the air at the exit. Therefore, TB, WB and HB be the properties corresponding to the air at the coil exit. With this definitions, let us now look at the expression for bypass factor. Bypass factor X is equal to TB minus TS divided by TA minus TS. It can also be expressed as WB minus WS divided by WA minus WS. It can also be expressed as HB minus HS divided by HA minus HS. And the contact factor as usual can be expressed as 1 minus X. With this, this lecture is completed. In case you have any questions, doubts, clarifications, etc., please feel free to write to me. The next topic is Applied Psychrometry Part 2. See you then. Thank you very much.